All right, Rock Addicts, this is DJ Rem, and I have Dan from the band The Omega Experiment. How you doing, man? I'm a little tired, but doing good. I'm on spring break from, from school, so I'm in college right now. Okay, very cool. Where are you going to school at? Grand Valley State University in, uh, in, in Allendale, Michigan. So I'm a junior, and I'm set to graduate in two years. So okay, it's cool. It's been a long road. Very cool. Well, I, I don't know if... Uh, if Scott told you, but I live in Michigan also. Yeah, he did, actually. Yeah, I'm in, uh, you know where Papa is? Yep. Yep, I'm just about two miles from Papa. That's cool. So, all right, Michigan in the house, sweet. Yeah. Okay, so let's start, if you can uh, introduce yourself and your spot in the band and the other members that are not with us. Um, my name is Dan Wheaton. Um, I am the main composer in the band. I also sing play guitar, um, handle the production duties, etc. Um, and uh, Ryan Aldridge plays keyboards, um, and he's he also does samples, and uh, he is not with us at the moment. Um, Matt Ryan plays bass. Um, he is our newest, newest member, um, the third official member, I guess you could say. Um, and then we have two live members right now. Um, Cody McCoy is from a band called Morning Wolf. Um, they're from Lansing, Michigan. Um, he's playing drums, and uh, also Cameron Cameron Lee is from Morning Wolf too, and he's playing second guitar. Okay, very cool. And how long has the Omega Experiment been around? Um, officially 2009. Like the winter of uh, 2009 is when we kind of debuted on MySpace of all places. Um, but you know, I've had the concept floating around since like spring 2007. But you know, there was no like. We didn't start writing the album or anything um, until two, winter 2009, so it's been a while. Very good. And what did you do to kind of get things started? I mean, how did you get the other guys together, and, and just how did everything get rolling for you? Well, um, Ryan and I, uh, I mean, we're the, we're the primary creative force, I guess you could say, and um, he is my, my best friend, but he's also my cousin by marriage, so I've known him since he was four. Um, he's 27 and I'm 35, so it's been a while. Uh, but basically I had this concept laying around, you know, I I was into drug addiction and all kinds of crazy behaviors for 10 years, you know, um, and he was there right along with me for most of it. And um, I made this, this concept when I was still in my active addiction, um, kind of, you know, laying out my life in sort of a autobiographical t- kind of t- context. And... Um, you know, kind of uh, wanting to come out of that, but not really knowing knowing how. Um, so Ryan and I both went to rehab in, in May of 2008, and you know, after coming out of it, you know, about nine months later, um, we were just kind of bored, you know. And I haven't I hadn't done anything musically for a while, and I was writing some stuff, and I decided to you know resurrect this concept, and we we uh, you know chose the name and started started writing this debut album um and you know it took us about two two and a half years to finish it because we've been in school uh and he has a family and everything um and the other members uh well we, we've had two live lineups before the one we have now um we were out live the fall of 2011 for a stint and then uh we were we toured last summer with a couple guys um, from a band called Aviations. Out, um, they're from Berkeley College of Music. Um, and that was just kind of a one-off thing just to get us going, touring and doing something. Um, Matt, uh, the bass player, he went out with us on tour last, last August. Um, and we, we decided to you know, keep him as a full-time member. And um, the Morning Wolf guys, Cody and, and Cameron, they're just a new addition. Um, you know, and it looks like, you know, hopefully this, this lineup will, as far as live, will, you know, be around for a little bit, so. Okay, very good. And I won't labor upon this, but I, I do want to give you huge props for uh, f- uh, f- for getting out of what you went through. Very cool, man. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yep, very, it's very, that's, that's, uh, takes a lot of, uh, <laughs> takes a lot of willpower to get through that, so. Yeah, I just, you know. I definitely didn't do it alone, you know, neither did Ryan. I mean, we've 
that's what I mean. I'm active in recovery, so I'm, I have an active support group. So, okay, I couldn't, couldn't have done it without that. Very cool. Well, I have some uh, some family members close to me that have gone through similar things, so I know all about it. And I, like I said, I just can't with, without be, without <laughs> you know talking about it forever. Just good job, dude. Oh, thanks. Okay, so what's the uh, music scene like for you guys? Um, how often are you guys doing live shows right now? Oh, we haven't been live actually since that tour because um, we. We wanted to do that tour just to kind of, you know, get some experience under our belt, and um, and then, you know, semester started again in the fall. So Ryan's an engineering student. You know, I'm a math major, so you know, it, it kind of takes up some of our time. Um, and then this deal with Listenable happened over the fall, and you know, a bunch of opportunities have been kind of coming our way. So um, you know, we'll be back out live in the summer um, with this this lineup. We're preparing for that now. So, very cool, and it just uh, shows that you can't judge a rock or in metalhead by uh, <laughs> by the music they play, Mister Mathman. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's funny too because when I was uh, you know in high school and everything, I dreaded math. And I, I don't know if it's an age thing or whatever, but since starting school again, um, you know I. I the first thing I started with again was just a math class just to start with some generals and I kept going with it because I was doing well at it and I just wanted to kind of see how far I could go and before I knew it you know like I completed every single math class at the community college so I'm like well maybe I can just do this right exactly so it's been it's been fun yeah there's uh not to get off on a side tangent but uh in a couple of weeks here I'm doing I'm going to a festival here, here. Well, the Fretboard Festival. Have you heard of it? It's in Kalamazoo at the Kalamazoo Valley Museum, actually. Yeah, I've heard of that. Well, I'm gonna actually have a booth set up, and I'm gonna be for the radio station and handed out pr- pr- promotional items from a lot of bands and stuff. And okay. uh, and the people that have a, a booth next to me, they're uh, do little guitars. It just happens, and that just kind of it's weird. I actually work with this guy. I did not know he's a guitar maker. He's an IT guy, so you never know. Oh yeah. Sure. That's awesome. So, okay, so how often do you guys get together and practice then? I mean, obviously, it sounds like it's probably kind of tough. It is. Um, this week was the first, my first time going to um, Lansing and, and kind of jamming with Cameron, you know, who's going to be um, second guitar. Because um, I don't really know him that well, you know, like my friend Clint sings for Morning Wolf, and, um, you know, I met his band members through him so like you know I just asked these guys if they wanted to do it and you know they were all for it so um yeah I mean it's it's definitely easier than our last lineup because James the drummer you know he lives in Tufton Michigan but he came from Boston because he's going to Berkeley uh and his guitar player Sam lives in Boston and goes it goes to Berkeley so they came out last summer to to do this tour um, this Midwest tour so um, it's definitely going to be easier than that because um, like I said Cameron lives in Lansing and um, Cody lives in Jackson so it's not really that far considering what we've already had to do to, to get this live you know what I mean right yep very good so okay so this album that I have that Clawhammer sent me and props to Clawhammer for hooking us up by the way yeah. and those guys are awesome they are and so when did you guys? When did you guys record this, and where? Uh, this was all done in my tiny little apartment bedroom. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, with just uh, very minimal gear. Um, it started out on a cheap ass e machines computer with like 40, 40 gig hard drive. You know, like I mean, obviously I had to upgrade after a while, but right. we had to, we had to use what was available to us because you know when you when you go into active drug addiction, like you lose everything. I mean, because you know, you have this disease that you have no idea. Of. I mean, you don't have the tools to know how to live life properly and save money and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, this thing was, you know, trying to accumulate music gear over a while and get back into the workforce and make money and all this stuff didn't happen overnight. So, like, you know, I, I had to mix this album on, you know, KLH, ABC Warehouse speakers and $30 <laughs> headphones, you know, and just use, like, 
the tools that were available to us. Um, but I think there's there's kind of a certain uh, there's kind of a certain character and an integrity that goes along with that, though, for having to use like for not having you know being blessed with an axe effects and all this other kind of stuff. You know what I mean? You kind of have to work with what you have. But uh, it was it was recorded, written and recorded simultaneously from winter 2009, and um, I wrapped up everything in, I think, June 2011, actually, and then I sent it off to Ackle from uh, the band called Tesseract, and he mastered it. And um, we had it sitting around for a minute, uh, just kind of talking to labels and see if somebody might want to put it out. Um, and we ended up just self-releasing it digitally in February of 2012, um, and with the, the proceeds from that, we sold it on Bandcamp. And then we pressed it in June of 2012 because um, a lot of people wanted physical copies. And then, you know, fast forward to fall 2012 and Listenable contacted us and, you know, the rest is history. They re-released it uh, February 25th in Europe and, and elsewhere. And then I believe the, the U.S. release date is April, first week of April, I think. Very good. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure anybody that's listened to it would never know how how that recording process worked for you because it sounds so good yeah i appreciate that um it was a, a labor of love yeah so let me tell you what i mean it was a lot of consulting you know uh acquaintances and peers and stuff over the internet you know that i respected and you know they're mixing opinions and everything and um also a, a lot of google and like going on to forums like the andy sneed forum on ultimate metal and sevenstring.org and just you know kind of reading up and I mean the internet is powerful man I mean you can with YouTube and everything like you can you don't have to take guitar lessons anymore you know what I mean like you, you can go on YouTube and literally learn how to how to be a musician or I mean you need the experience but you know what I mean like the skills you can you can find anything yeah there's there's so there's so much material available now to everyone yeah. That, yeah, I mean, the internet has been wonderful, especially for bands, because, you know, obviously the music industry is not what it used to be, so if, if you want to get your stuff out there, you pretty much have to do all the work yourself. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of a, it's a definitely different, because, you know, like I said, I'm 35, and, and I come from a, a very different, you know, when I, was get, when I was beginning to be in bands when I was like 12, 13 years old, you know, this is none of I mean I didn't I couldn't have imagined YouTube or or I mean the internet was just becoming a thing so it's yep. like to think about if I would have had all the all these things at my disposal when I was that young you know I can't imagine how much different things would be but in a way I'm glad that I was there when things were much harder because I think it it, it adds a certain kind of element to your I don't know, to, to your writing and to your work ethic and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. But the, 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 the thing with, like, a lot of the, like, the prod community that I communicate with, you know, musicians are, are getting, players are getting better younger, and it's just, it's scary. It's really scary. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. There's this, there's this band. They're called Drader. They're all like in like middle school, maybe up into high school now, and they just are amazing. They just shred. And I'm like, I remember, I think back to high school and middle school. I can't even imagine playing a guitar like that. Yeah, it's nuts, man. Like some of the YouTube players that I see on a daily basis just blow my mind. Yep. Yeah. So obviously, then the other, the flip side, and this is you know pro- maybe it's more of a flip side for me because what I do is with the internet and availability of everything and the fact that ever you know anybody that has a little bit of know-how can record something it's kind of flooded the market so that's kind of a, a slight downside and what happens for me is you know i get a pile of music sent to me which is awesome but there's a lot of stuff in there you just wonder you know does does anybody tell these guys what they sound like right yeah you got to weed out the forums and i can't imagine how frustrating that is because on a daily basis in facebook chat or you know email or, or in our, our uh, messages on our band page and shit like that, you know, it's just like, we I get flooded with music, like, hey, check this out, check that out, and, you know, I don't have time to check everything out, but sometimes, like, 
sometimes I will I will will hear a diamond in the rough, and you know if I do, I go out of my way to try to support that, you know. Um, but it's tough, man. I mean, there's there's way too much. Yeah, and, and that's what I really uh, enjoy slash dig of my uh, relationship with Clawhammer is we've been working together for a couple of years now and they they kind of ha- they kind of have me down for what I like and don't like and so they pretty much if they if they push if they send me a band and say hey you know what these guys are looking to do an interview you know would you be willing to I kind of already have a good idea that I'm probably going to like them if you know what I mean that's good that's really good so so tell me about the uh, this this cover this art for for the album. What's going on? Who does who came up with that concept? Um, I don't know if you ever ever heard of a band called Uneven Structure. Um, they're from France and they're on Basic Records out of the UK. Uh, um, I just kind of for, formed a friendship with Igor, the guitar player. Um, he's one of the primary songwriters and he does all their artwork. And I I, I looked at their layout, you know, and their just the package of their album um, Feverous and it was just really I don't know it just it was just it seemed to fit you know what the kind of aura I was I was thinking about you know I mean we went through you know we got ripped off by somebody on on uh, what's that dang site um, I can't remember the name of it right now but there's one of those artwork sites um, and we you know we sent this guy, you know, like half half down to start this artwork for us, and he sent us, you know, this image that was somebody else's image from deviant art, that's it. Um, and this guy, you know, basically ripped us off, and we didn't end up getting anything out of it. And then I was talking to this other guy, you know, and he started doing some stuff for us, but it, it, nothing that really ever felt right. Um, and we didn't want to go the same route like everybody's been going with, like, an image of space or whatever we thought we did but we wanted to do something different and um so i consulted igor and you know this is what you see is the first thing he came up with and at first i was like what in the hell is this you know like <laughs> it, it was it really at first it, it bummed me out and it didn't make sense and then i kept looking at it for a couple of days and i'm like man this is amazing because i sat with our album and i listened to it and i, I looked at this image and i'm like you know I see a lot of people, and um, a lot of people say that it looks like like a woman's area. If you know what I mean, uh-huh, like, right? And I think that that might be sort of part of it because it, what it's there's part of the concept is is like a rebirth. You know what I mean, right? Um, the the start of the album gift is like it's kind of like birth itself. You know, uh-huh. um, it starts. If I'm talking in an autobiographical sense, it starts at the start of life, you know? Right. Um, but it's also like a rebirth, like coming out of addiction and into, you know, a different and better life. So if it can be symbolized as that way, that's fine. Um, I didn't really pick that up to start with, but, you know, it just, it seems like it's kind of uplifting and, and something's about to explode or, you know, be born or, or what have you, so... I don't know, I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's very cool. I'm looking at it right now. When I look at it, it almost makes me feel like, uh, like a, you know, like a, a star is being born kind of thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. Out in space. It's, it's, I don't know. I just think it's cool. Because what I don't like, this my personal opinion, throw that in there, but what I don't like is when bands put a picture of themselves on the front of the cover and, and say, okay, here's my cover. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless you're Michael Jackson, it doesn't really work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, another cool thing is, you know, and it, it sounds like it's kind of what happ- how this worked out for you, but a lot of bands I talk to, they'll send, like, the album to the artist, and they just say, come up with something, and it's amazing how the artist takes the, the music as art and turns it into a visual experience, so. That's exactly what we did, too. You know, I, I didn't give him any, any direction whatsoever. I just trusted him, so it came out good. Yeah, well, props to him, and... Props to you guys for going with them. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so how did you come up with the name The Omega Experiment? Where'd that come from? Um, it, initially, it was called Omega, just playing Omega. Uh, and this was, you know, like I said, right around 07 when I started thinking about this in my head. Um, and I just wanted some kind of, you know, like big, big, meaningful word that was uh, just almost apocalyptic or something you notice 
something epic. And um, and I knew, like, you know, there's a couple different meetings for it, but the, the initial meeting that I had was, was end, you know, or the end. Um, and knowing I wanted to come out of that lifestyle, I was, I was leading, you know, like, what better word, you know? Um, but it seemed like it had a little bit too ominous or negative of a, a connotation um, in the music that, you know, I tend to write is is very uplifting. So when we started writing music around the concept and everything, you know, we were talking about the name and, you know, I wanted something else with that, you know, and I thought about the Omega experience and all kinds of, you know, Omega project and all kinds of stuff. Um, and, you know, when I thought of the word experiment, I'm like, well, this makes sense because, it, you know, what we're doing in the studio, manipulating sounds and kind of an anything goes, you know, philosophy, it, it makes sense. So the Omega part is is that, you know, the end of that, that life and kind of a, a, a new beginning or whatever. And then the experiment part is like, I guess, the musical aspect and what we're doing. So, Okay, very good. All right. So, where is where's the best place for people to go to find out more about you guys? What um, s- you know, social networking and such do you guys use? Um, definitely Facebook. It's and it's just facebook.com slash the Omega Experiment. Okay. Do you guys have a website or anything, or do you just pretty much use Facebook? We just use Facebook for now. Um, I'm sure you know. I'm sure in the future we'll have a domain. Um, I guess as of right now, it's not really. A, that important uh no i yeah i totally get that i've been i've been trying to for all the stuff i do i've been trying to kind of been mulling around you know do i should i start a website for my stuff but between youtube and and facebook i can do everything i need to do without ever starting a website yeah it's just the only the only bummer about facebook is like you know they're getting a, a little bit greedy or I don't know like I, I really maybe I'm unappreciative because Facebook gave, basically gave me a music career but like you know the things where like if you want to send somebody a message that you're not friends with and they're trying to charge you or like you know the paying for promotion paying for you can pay for likes you can pay for you know if, if you want to promote a post if you want to see like we have you know however many likes on Facebook like 7600 or something and if we want all of our, our likes to see our, our postings, we have to pay for it. Which, and it makes sense because, I mean, most advertising you have to pay for, but it's just, in, the thing is, initially it, it was all free. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it started out as a way for you to be able to easily connect with people, and they've taken the easy part out. Exactly. And I think, like, when I looked at, when Facebook started charging for things, and, and, I, and I looked at the, I tried to look for the difference between are there more people interacting with us or was there more people interacting with us before they started charging and I don't think there, there really was I think what was going on was you know they, they were limiting the amount of uh, exposure you had in the first place and then they kind of added the extra thing well if you want more you can pay for it right so yep it's unfortunate but what are you going to do right yeah, you really, you really don't have a choice because, I mean, Facebook is, you know, in all these sites, YouTube and everything, I mean, they're, they're like Microsoft or any huge corporation, you know, that's, that's what they do. Yep. Well, and that's why, that's why I love YouTube, though, because I can upload as many interviews as I want, as big of files as I want, you know, and I don't get charged, and I can just throw them out there, so. Yeah, and if you, if you have... You know, enough views you can make money on YouTube. Right, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some people who have gotten pretty rich off it, actually. Oh, definitely. Okay, so what is, uh, what's the band's future goals? I mean, where do you guys hope to be in a couple of years with all this? Um, definitely, you know, have a sophomore album out already. I mean, we're shooting for 2014 at some point because, you know, we've, since this album is being re-released, we've had, I mean, we've had plenty of time to already start new stuff, so, I mean, we're, we're, um, in the demoing stages of album two, so, definitely already another album, and possibly already an EP after that, by then, um, and, 
just you know if if it calls for it you know touring um just the weird thing about us is we never set out to be doing what we're doing right now and every so everything feels like a blessing right you know, we never set out to have this much much exposure or be playing live i mean we didn't think it was possible to play this stuff live um it was kind of like we threw it out there in my space to see what the initial reaction would be and the support was overwhelming so everything still feels like a blessing and if we can still be doing what we're doing now but you know possibly on a bigger scale in a couple of years then that's great if not you know i would just i would like to continue making albums you know i'd be content either way i think very good well I know I can say as I wish you uh, the best of success with everything, and I hope uh, things continue to work out as they have for you guys. Yeah, definitely. Me too. Okay, so I'm gonna, I am gonna. got a couple questions that are really just kind of geared for you. Um, so what kind of influences did you have growing up, have you had in your life, that you know made you want to get into music in general and, and do this and, and keep it going? Um, I, I would say the first one was definitely my Uncle Mark who is um, Ryan's stepdad, actually, which is weird, you know, because I didn't know him before. When my Uncle Mark showed me Kiss, you know, Ryan wasn't in my life. Um, and then, you know, his, he, my Uncle Mark ended up marrying Ryan's mom, so that's how we're cousins. Um, but when he showed me Kiss, you know, it was pretty much all over from that point. Like, and then he, he would, I would go over his house and he'd babysit me and he'd show me you know, like ACDC, and this is all vinyl, you know, um, so it was really kind of cla- of a classic time. Um, Motley Crue, you know, shout at the Devil Gatefold, I would stare at that for hours. Um, and then, you know, when I when I was eight, my dad bought me a guitar, um, and I didn't really play it, like, for real. I just stood in my mirror and, you know, air banded to Kiss and Poison <laughs> and stuff right. like that. Um, and, you know, I got serious about it with lessons and stuff when I was, like, 11, um, and I guess, you know, from, from that point, it was just, uh, you know, surrounding the people I surrounded myself with, you know, some of my friends in middle school, you know, were listening to Metallica and Megadeth and, you know, I remember Slayer scared me to death, man. And like 88, <laughs> I heard South of Heaven. I'm like, what on earth is this? And I was terrified, but it was really exciting to, at the same time. Right. So yep. N- not even a year later, I'm listening to, listening to death, spiritual healing you know, which is way heavier. And then a year after that, I'm listening to the DSI debut. So, like, I went I went thrust straight from heavy metal to, like, death metal, you know? <laughs> so, like, the early 90s death metal was really, really um, impressionable to me. And, you know, and like, right around 93, black metal came into the picture with the church burnings. And, you know, my extreme metal history goes way, way back. Um, and the more progressive side of it didn't really start until I got an, into Dream Theater, which was right about 93 also. So um, I was pretty close-minded back then, but, you know, when, it, when I got into Dream Theater, it, it awoke my, my uh, classic rock spirit, I guess, because it reminded me of being in, in the car riding with my dad and hearing stick songs on the radio and Rush and REO and Boston and, and stuff like that. And that sort of sound stuck with me, you know, and that's what, you know, the, an element that I'm trying to bring to the Omega Experiment is that feeling of uh, uh, those classic rock songs, you know, when you hear them on the radio and you're, it's a summer day and you're driving or something like that, you know, those kind of melodies always remind me of a certain time in my life or a certain person or whatever, so that's the sort of musical element that I wanted to bring, you know, that classic kind of you know, hair on the back of your neck standing up, fly it, you know what I mean? And then there's there's so many other elements too, like, I don't know, like old Spielberg movies and the John Williams soundtracks, you know? Just that feeling in general was always really inspiring to me. And mixing that with, you know, the heavier side of, of music that I'm into, you know, like the Devin Townsend and uh, Fear Factory and, you know, just so many more, Dillinger Escape Plan, Meshuggah, uh, Mike Patton, I mean, I could just probably go on forever, you know what I mean? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Do you, um, are you a fan of Exodus? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say 
more so, I mean, I hate to sound like a hipster, but, you know, Bonded by Blood, um, when, when they got into the thrashier stuff, it, I thought it was pretty cool, but um, I didn't really get into their older stuff until after the thrashy stuff was out. Right. When I, when I did, you know, it, it just, I don't know, I, I liked it better. Um, but the one thing about Exodus that I always liked was was their guitar playing, and especially their guitar tone. I always thought they had, like, the best thrash metal guitar tone ever. Yeah, they're pretty cool, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and the, the, the main, the real reason I asked you that question is because Rob Dukes, you know, who's the, the, the current lead singer, he um, is also in a band that I'm friends with called Generation Kill, and you should, uh, you should check them out and let me know what you think. For sure. Sounds good. So if, if I grabbed your iPod or your MP3 player or however you like to listen to music, uh, what bands would I find you listening to right now? Um, I mostly listen to Spotify because I have an iPhone and I have the Spotify app. And I, I mean, I also have iTunes and stuff like that, but I tend to listen to Spotify more and I make playlists. And honestly, the, the playlist I listen to the most is, is my 80s playlist, and it's got... Uh, Tears for Fears, um, Phil Collins, um, Phil Collins era Genesis, um, Michael Jackson, Prince, Huey Lewis, uh, Winger, <laughs> um, Rat, you know, Death Leopard. Just basically, my my childhood is in there. Lionel Richie, you know, uh, Men at Work. Um, but there's just something about like synthy '80s music that just really really sticks with me and especially you know during the day when I'm when I'm going to my classes and everything and I want to stay kind of an upbeat mood you know mm -hmm. um, I always go to my 80s playlist but you know during the other times of night you know like especially like it's getting you know spring is coming and the weather's nicer and it, uh, I tend to listen to you know a lot of kind of hip hipster black metal, like Wolves in the Throne Room um, and stuff like that, you know, uh, Altar of Plagues. Uh, and then last fall, you know, I went, I went on an, an old school black metal tangent with like Emperor Mayhem and Burzum, Dark Throne. Uh, it depends on the day, dude. I mean, old school death metal, that's where I'm at right now with like Pestilence and Death and Level and Creation. Uh, I don't know, I'm just extremely open-minded when it comes to music but i'm like any other typical metalhead you know i don't listen to country and rap <laughs> i can't find you know any validity in it so it doesn't apply to my life i guess but yeah my 80s playlist is where i go the most well i can totally appreciate that because i have a very um open-minded uh musical taste too and i listen to all that stuff as well so and I really appreciate it when when people when when bands have a very open mind because I, I think it just makes comes out when their music is better musicians. So I think that it's very makes, makes for an interesting listen for sure. Yeah, always kind of tell you know. Yep, and I'm apparently I'm not a typical metalhead because I also like country and I also like rap. So oh really? Well, I mean, hey, I don't fault you for that. You know. Well, that's the beauty of music. You know, I mean, there's so many different styles and genres and all this stuff. And if it sounds good to you, that's all that matters. So, definitely. Yep. Very cool. Now, don't hold that against me, though. But I definitely wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I have tons, tons of my friends really love rap. So, and you know, my dad loves country, and I don't hate him. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, when when I say rap, I don't. I don't. I'm not into the new stuff. I'm into the old school stuff like N.W.A. and well, and, I, and Ice Cube, that kind of stuff. I can definitely. I mean, I have N.W.A. greatest hits. You know, I mean. I love 100 Miles and Running, you know, so, like, yep. there's some old stuff that I do get into, and um, sometimes two live crew is, is cool because it makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, or, or Digital Underground I always thought was hilarious, you know, so yep. it depends. Yeah, all right, very cool. Okay, so what do you think sets uh, the Omega Experiment apart from, you know, a lot of the other bands out there that are trying to do, the, do something similar? Why should... Uh, people check out your music and if you guys do live shows why should they come see you i think hopefully we're bringing something different to the table uh just like any other scene i, I think the prog scene um 
even though it's called progressive, can get very unprogressive. Um, sometimes people get back into a, a, a kind of a, a niche or a little box. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's. Uh, I think maybe one of the things that we're doing that people aren't is is bringing that that classic rock element to it and not really being afraid to wear our influences on our our sleeves. You know, like. We have a song like Fear on our album, which is like, you know, jackhammer, Fear Factory beats over like some crazy Dillinger style, you know, soloing, riffing, and then I can go to a song like Paramount, which is like influenced by Madonna, you know what I mean, and like 80s synth pop and, and right. stuff, like, stuff like that, and, and I, I think, you know, for the most part, it all makes sense. Some people, it rubs them the wrong way, but, you know... We don't really care about that, you know. It seems like yep, exactly. We're just, we're just like I said initially when we made when we started this album, we didn't have anybody else's opinions in mind, and, and we still don't. You know, it's like I worry about that after a while, being so exposed in the in the scene and being flooded with music, new music every day. But you know, the writing process for this next album is, is kind of going along the same lines. Um, we're just kind of doing what what feels right and sounds right to us, and I think it's. You know, hopefully the approach is, is you know, different enough. Um, and I think it is. And as far as live goes, um, we, tr- we try to keep it, you know, a very consistent experience like like our album. You know, I mean, we have samples running through uh, the gaps in between songs, you know, just to, just to try to keep it consistent. Um, you know, there's some healthy crowd interaction and, you know, we have all of our samples that we don't play it, you know, on our instruments, you know, they're on a backing track. So, like, you know, all the bases are covered live. So uh, we, we try to do it anyway to, our, to the best of our ability. And, you know, a lot of times you can be at the mercy of a sound guy, you know. Uh, I think one of, one of the biggest issues we've had live so far is not turning our samples up high enough. Um, and I wish we had the means right now to have our own sound guy, but that'd be another future goal. You know, for the next couple of years, like you were talking about earlier. Right, so definitely. If we could have our own sound guy, that'd be great because our samples and our, especially the keys being loud and everything like that, that's a crucial, crucial element to our sound. So that's what you can expect. Very cool. I appreciate you sharing all that. So, is there anything else you would like to tell everyone that'll listen to this interview about you guys? Anything I haven't asked you, you want to make sure people know? Oh, man. This has been a, uh, a pretty pretty vast interview, and I think it's covered pretty much every base that I can think of, actually. So, you know, good job on that. Okay, well, I will I will take that as a compliment, and uh, that I did my job appropriately. So, very very good. Awesome. Okay, I just I have one last thing to ask from you before I let you go. Okay. And I would love a couple of radio tags if you don't mind. So the first one you can you can say your name and that you're from the Omega Experiment and you're listening to rockaddictradio.com. Okay. Any uh, any, any yep. second? Or? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Rockaddictradio.com. Yes. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Dan Wheaton from the Omega Experiment and you're listening to rockaddictradio.com. Let me do that again. Yeah. No problem. Hey everybody, this is Dan Wheaton from the Omega Experiment, and you're listening to RockAddictRadio.com. Perfect. And then the second one, the exact same thing, but just throw in there that you're listening to DJ Rem at Rock Addict Radio. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Dan from the Omega Experiment, and you're listening to DJ Rem at RockAddictRadio.com. Okay, very cool, man. Totally appreciate you taking, uh, spending 40 minutes with me to, uh, to chit-chat. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and uh, we will continue to play your music at the station um, I'll make sure you guys are in the rotation as well because we have a 24-7 stream and, that I run so I'll make sure you're in there and yeah, we'll keep doing our little part to help pushing you guys out there awesome and do you have a do you guys have a Facebook page besides your um, your site or let me um, I'll, uh, I'll private message you on Facebook Okay. Through through your um, through the Omega Experiment site, I'll I'll send you I'll send you links to all my all our stuff. Okay, sounds good. So and then like I said, within the next week or so, I will have this edited and then I will 
I'll upload it to YouTube, and then I will send you a link as well to that, and I'll post it on your Facebook page, and then you can, you know, spread it out there. Awesome. And also, and also send it to Clawhammer, and if we ask nice, they they'll probably help promote it for us too. So. <laughs> okay. Cool. Good talking to you. So okay. Well, thanks again, and ha- have a great day, and uh, go Michigan, man. <laughs> oh yeah. You have a good one too, man. Okay. Take care. Bye.